all know, but still pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. In the next two weeks, we have been warned, there is going to be darkness. We are almost at a point of grid collapse. It's a reality that South Africans must know that we are heading to darkness and ANC politicians are continuing business as usual, as if we are not in a crisis. We are in a deep, deep, deep crisis. Cell phone networks will not work. Water, if, even if we have it, we won't receive it because it needs electricity. Nothing is going to function. We are heading for a disaster. No one will go to work. The dead will have to be buried the same day because there will not be fridges to keep them. No generator is meant to operate 24 hours. Generator is an intervention for a short while. Even those who have generators will not be saved from the mess we are going into. We want you. We went to the streets because we knew this was coming. History will absolve us. We were called names, were ridiculed, were insulted. Police and the army were called on us for trying to protect us from where we are. They are just calling, calling it stage 10 for, 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 for nice weight. The reality is that it's darkness. And it's not going to be darkness of uh, 12 hours or 24 hours it comes back. No. At times it's going to take three to four days. At times it will take a week. At times it will take a month without electricity. The whole leadership must, call, must go. We cannot uh, fall back and do nothing. And you so let's start by giving our praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashim. Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Kakwadash, in Hebrew, that's giving praises to the Most High Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who is our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakakwadash, double honors to the elders and apostles, along with the Holy Spirit, who taught us this truth, honors to the brethren that's laboring doing the work to push the gospel, risking their life and freedom to do so, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. The one third of the nation of Israel, who would be the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians, who return back to the Most High Yahweh through his only son, Yahweh Shai, during these final moments, so that he will have mercy on us and judgment. So, that first clip with the Edomite Claus Schwab, that Edomite with the gobble neck, you see, he started to talk about a comprehensive cyber attack. Comprehensive, meaning it is going to be many cyber attacks going on at once. And like a screenshot I took here, they said things at major risk for a cyber attack would be pretty much the economy, you know, the banks, you know, all of that, the power grid, and the water systems. Which he said that the next pandemic is going to be a cyber pandemic. And it's going to make the pandemic from 2020 seem like a minor disturbance meaning what happened in 2020 gonna be small compared to the cyber attack that's coming he said it's gonna completely bring to a stop the, the power supply hospital services and transportation but also society as a whole so this comprehensive cyber attack gonna make a big mess and then you saw that in the next two clips over there in South Africa, 
they talking about the same thing, that they about to be in darkness. Hey, but that's not just South Africa that's coming to America because the Lord compared the other nations of people to the beast of the field. The book of Job will tell you, you know, consider the beast of the field. They teach you, you know, in the book of Job, it's talking about the actual animals, but even symbolically, it's talking about the other nations of people as well. Meaning you can look what's going on in these foreign countries to get a glimpse of what's coming to America. So if they talking about that in South Africa, hey, that applies for America as well. The Lord said in the best for last. And some of the things that he said was, matter of fact, let's get this first, this first uh, precept. So they say, you know, it's a warning. We about to be in darkness. That's Isaiah 40, 47 to 5. Set thou silent and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans. It's concerning you Americans. For thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. What's the Lady of Kingdoms? America. Who's that lady? Lady Liberty, the Great Whore. So darkness is coming to this place. Complete darkness. Then going to our next precept when we hit Revelation 18 and 8. It reads, Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death, mourning, and famine, and she shall utterly be burned with fire, for strong is the Lord Yahweh who judgeth her. So yeah, all these plagues are going to begin in one day. All this stuff is going on on a small level, but this stuff is going to greatly intensify in one day. That's when that, when that blackness, that darkness, the blackout comes to the streets of America. Because again, the Lord says, sit thou silent and get thee into darkness, our daughter of the Chaldeans. Why are you going to sit thou silent? It ain't going to be nowhere to go. Nothing to do. Nothing going to be working. So you're going to sit there in silence, hoping that nobody hear you. Because your life is going to be dependent on how quiet you can be. That's why they made movies like In the Quiet Place. Where in the movie, they life depended on them being quiet the whole time. And then something he mentioned that, you know, generators not going to work. Generators are a temporary intervention, meaning they only meant to be used um, in small doses. Because like you say, when these blackouts happen, it's not going to be for 12 hours. Then the power come back on. It's not going to even be for 24 hours and 72 hours. That's short. It's people all over America that's going one, two, three, four, and five days without power anyway. Such as when you got tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, flash flooding. He said the blackouts that's coming, they're going to be for weeks at a time, even months. So what you going to do with a generator? Not to mention a generator got to be charged. It got to be maintenance. Nothing ain't going to be working. How you going to maintenance it? How you going to charge it? When it ain't no power, it runs off of power. And then too, a generator, even if it do last temporarily, that's just going to make you a target. For example, if the entire city block got no power, no lights, no heat, no air conditioner, but, you know, nighttime come, and people see that your house got air conditioning, heat. You know what I'm saying? They see your house got lights on it. Well, everybody in the city going to come after you. So having a generator is actually a trap. What does a trap do? A trap makes you a sitting duck. Because the Lord going to have it being a blackout so we can flee under the cover of darkness. So we can flee, Lord willing, without being seen, without being caught. So for example, when the animals sense danger, they flee. But what happened? They get caught by a trap. Somebody might lay some food out. They may get caught in a trap, you know, that make them stay still so they can't move. So what? Nah, they're gonna get caught. We know Esau is a cunning hunter. So these generators are the same thing. Everybody gonna go buy a generator 
that's going to make them what? A sitting duck in their house when they should be fleeing in the darkness. So you're going to get caught. So a generator ain't going to help you. I mean, the Lord literally says, sit down silent, get thee into darkness. So you think a generator going to save you from this? Who do you think gave the people the idea to create a generator? You thought the, you thought the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah was going to be trumped by you having a generator? Nobody is going to escape this darkness. You have a generator, it's going to get you caught. If you don't get caught, it won't be, it won't be working for long because it's going to burn out on you. The Lord literally said, get thee into darkness. So there's nothing that nobody can do to escape this darkness. And then the next precept we're going to go to, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, you Israelites, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. So they take counsel, guidance, instruction from the government, from the world leaders, from the people in the world. And that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. They don't take counsel from those who was given the Holy Spirit, you know, to speak these words. The men of the Lord, his servants, the prophets, that they may add sin to sin. That walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth. So you ask the government, your politicians, your world leaders, the people in the world for guidance. But you don't ask the Lord himself. You don't inquire about the Lord from the servants, the prophets, prophets. You just lean on your own understanding to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore, should the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. What's the strength of Pharaoh? The strength of Pharaoh is the U.S. dollar. Not to mention, they got a pyramid on the back of the one dollar bill. That's the strength of Pharaoh. You know, because they speak of the U.S. dollar as having a level of strength. They may say the dollar was the strongest currency 20 years back. Well, now nah, they saying that the U.S. dollar is getting weaker. So Pharaoh is losing his strength. And the point is, when it says, sure, the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. So everybody that put their trust in the money, you're not going to have nothing to spend your money on. But the point is, what did money do for America it built up it built up America this entire infrastructure the railroads the interstates the freeways the residential streets the airports um, uh, the ports the harbors that allow the ships to come in the planes to fly uh, city transportation uh, Amtrak city trains biking trails uh, dirt roads, hospitals, all that, that was built off the strength of Pharaoh, which would be the U.S. dollar. So when the dollar crash, all this other stuff ain't going to be no good neither. Because what? It needs money to continue to function. Not to mention, all of this stuff is dependent on the power supply grid. The power supply grid is going to be the, the main thing that's attacked. So... None of this infrastructure that was built up by the U.S. dollar is going to work when we in complete darkness. So that's why the Lord said the strength of Pharaoh, whether it be the money or whether it be the infrastructure that America has built up with her money, it's going to contribute to your shame. It ain't going to be no good. And then, too, he said cell phone networks not going to work. So the internet towers, the 5G towers, the 4G towers, the um, the um, the street lights, the I can't think of them, the wires when you drive it down the street, that's all part of the U.S. infrastructure built off the U.S. dollar. None of that stuff gonna work. So you ain't gonna be able to call nobody. You're not gonna be able to call nobody for advice. You're not gonna be able to turn on your TV to see what the news say you should do. You ain't going to be able to lean on nobody but Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. And most people are not going to think to do that. That's why the Lord said, therefore, the strength of Pharaoh shall be your shame. So everything that built this place up, the American dollar, the infrastructure, you know, everything of the world is going to fail you when the Lord put this place in darkness. 
Not to mention, we're going to be on the lockdown. You know, that lockdown in 2020, like Klaus Schwab said, it's going to be a minor disturbance of what's to come. And then lastly, again, in the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. What's the shadow of Egypt? That's the government, the world leaders, the politicians, the people that's on TV telling you what's coming. They're going to keep you in confusion because... That's why the South African leader, whoever he was, he said that our world leaders are conducting business as usual. Although they conduct the business as usual, we got all these different disasters and catastrophes that's about to take place. Because if you look at the world leaders, you will look like, you know, no disaster is coming. It looked like everything is a okay. Hey, but they know what's coming. They could be in them underground bunkers. So again, the trust in the shadow of Egypt gonna be your confusion. You know, looking to the world leaders, you're gonna make all the wrong decisions. Cause the Lord is about to make a mess out of this place. And we're gonna show that. Also, too, um, he said that there would be no water. That's why we see right here that the water systems is at risk for a cyber attack. And everything run, runs off of water. Like he say, the water treatment plants that pump the water throughout the city, that's dependent on electricity. So the plumbing, uh, the sewage, the sewers, the water treatment plants, that's a part of the strength of Pharaoh too. That's a part of critical U.S. infrastructure. The water system's going to be your shame. And when you flush the toilet or things go, go down the drain, you know, there's things in play to make that stuff flow one direction. So when the water treatment plants get backed up, when the sewage and the sewers get full, that stuff going to flow back into our homes. So people may have backed up sewer pipes, backed up sinks, backed up bathtubs with who knows what in it backed up toilets you might have to dump your toilet by you know scooping it out with a bucket and throwing it outside or something it's gonna be who knows what coming back up out them sewers because nothing is working there's nothing to keep it flowing in one direction that stuff is gonna backflow the water um the waters are gonna be contaminated there's gonna be no running water so that's gonna cause what uh, pestilence to go up, sicknesses, diseases, illnesses. You're not going to be able to clean nothing. Baby's got diaper rashes. Well, you know how sick a baby can get from a diaper rash. The elderly, you know how sick some of them can get because they bedridden, they blind. They depend on nurses and staff to take care of them. Well, hey, they going to get sick and die too. And then anybody else who need water for anything, you know, that's going to increase viruses, uh, bacterial infections, and all kinds of sicknesses out there. And we're going to show that there's going to be no running water. So we're going to go to the book of 2nd Ezra 6 and 24. And at that time, friends show fight one against another like enemies. What's that time? Well, when that blackout happens, because it's going to be no food and it's going to be a fight for survival out here. And the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountains shall stand still. What's the, frame, what's the fountain? What's the spring? It's a source of running water. It says it's going to stand still. And in three hours, they shall not run. So in a short time, Almost suddenly, the water's not going to be running. That's going to cause a lot of issues itself. You know, forget the internet not working. Forget it being no electricity. No water. That's going to be a hard hitter right there. Then also, too, going up to 2nd Ezra 6 and 22. And suddenly, shall the sown places appear unsown. What's the sown places? Pretty much everywhere where the white man brought his colonization, all these cities, they're going to appear unsung. 
So everything that's functioning, that's thriving right now, is going to be not functioning. And the four storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. Yeah, because these stores going to go empty from people stealing. That's going to be the store is going to be the first thing to go. And then the store is going to be empty within the first few days. Well, if the blackout lasts for weeks and months, hey, for weeks and months, it's going to be nothing in the stores. That's why it's going to be friends fighting one against another like enemies. And the four storehouses being filled, I mean, be found empty because he said nothing is going to function. And you got to really use your imagination when he says nothing is going to function. Like Claus Schwab said, there's going to be no transportation services, no hospital services. So everybody that depends on a nurse and at the hospital, they're going to be the first ones to die. Those on uh, those in ICU, those on life support, those on oxygen tanks, they oxygen run out, they're going to die. You know, everybody that need close care and a lot of treatment. You know, people on uh, pacemakers, they on all kind of heart rate monitors. They got to be monitored closely. They could be the first ones to die. Those who want all kind of medications, you know, because they got severe health issues, they could be the first ones to die. Ain't no prescriptions getting filled. Nothing is going to work. Nothing is going to function. Yeah. And again, something to think about. I'm going to expound on it a little bit. Those who got uh, pacemakers. A pacemaker is a, it's a external electrical device that's placed in your chest near the heart. It keep your heart beating correctly. Well, if it's an EMP attack and all the electrical devices are fried, it's more people on a pacemaker than you think. Those that's on them pacemakers, they're going to drop instantly. Vehicles ain't going to work. Gas stations ain't going to work. They need electricity. Nothing going to function. It's going to be no internet. There's going to be no police officer. There's going to be no law. You only have a law when you have people to enforce it. There's not going to be any police officers. It's not going to be no firefighters. It's not going to be no ambulance. So that's why the Lord said, get thee into darkness. And just a little bit. To show, we're going to go to the book of Ecclesiastes 12 and 3. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because they are few. What's the grinders? Those who are employed. That stuff is going to um, start to decrease. And those that look out of the windows be darkened. What does it mean, those that look out of the windows to be darkened? So as things worsen, people going to be looking out the window, and there's going to be no light, no hope in the earth. That's why the scriptures say the day of the Lord is all darkness and no light. It's a phrase in the world. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. Well, the Lord said, get thee into darkness. So once the Lord bring a blackout to this place, there's going to be no hope. There's not going to be any light at the end of this tunnel, this tunnel of judgment. Let's continue. And the door shall be shut in the streets. Yeah, that's again the sown places appearing unsown. Yeah, the doors are going to be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low. There's going to be nobody working. That's why the Lord said, uh, sit thou silent. You know, it's going to, it's not going to be no music. It's not going to be cars driving up and down the road. You know, Claus Schwab said it's going to bring to a complete stop. Society, society is going to stop completely. And he shall rise up at the voice of the bird and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Yes, so all these doors in the streets, everything going to be shut down. Then what we're going to get to next. Um, Isaiah 19 and 15. Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which the head or the tail or the branch or the rush may do. Yeah, that's why the South African leader said nobody's going to go to work. Again, he said nothing's going to be functioning. 
So another thing that's at risk for a cyber attack is the U.S. financial sector. Uh, the banks, deposits, stocks, bonds, investments, checks account, uh, uh, savings accounts, um, direct deposit, the payroll system, wire transferring, banking, electronic services, all that stuff is going to be out the window. That stuff is all linked via the internet. So when the internet go out, hey, there's going to be no records or documentation of the money you actually had in the bank. Because all of those records are kept electronically. They don't keep a notebook for everybody that comes to the bank. They got this much money in a checkings account. They got this much money in a saving account. No, that's all on the computer. So work, money, that's going to be the last thing on your mind. Hey, and it says for the head or the tail. He saw the white man would be the head. Your presidents, CEO, executives. Who to tell? Those who come last. Your essential workers, which mainly the children of Israel do. There's going to be no work for nobody. Let's continue. And that they shall Egypt, which is America, be like unto women. So it says Egypt shall be like unto women. This is not talking about women. This is talking about men. So you men going to be reduced to the state of a woman. Uh, defenseless and helpless. You know, and you women that think, you know, y'all somebody because you got a gun or you got, you ain't going to be able to call nobody. It's different when somebody else got a gun pointing at you. And then the Brother Blood Covenant just did a lesson on it. You know, women... Y'all not killers. Y'all don't got that that killer instinct. Y'all are not warriors. That's going to be made very clear when the lights go out. So again, in that day, shall Egypt be like women. So everybody going to be reduced. The men going to be reduced to women. And the women going to be reduced damn near to a child. Hey, women and children going to be in the same boat. They both going to be useless, defenseless, helpless, weak, scared, and a lot of you men going to be in the same boat with the women and children. Let's continue. And it shall be afraid and fearful because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he shake of over it. Yeah, because the Lord coming to shake this place up, turn it upside down, turn it inside out. He going to make a mess of this place. Let's see what else we got. So we also going to go to the book of Jeremiah 14 and 16 and the people to whom they prophesy. So anybody who not in his truth, that's taking heed to these other doctrines of philosophies that's going to come to naught should be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem. This is concerning America because America is a melting pot. It's all these ancient lands wrapped up into one. That's why you got so many people over here. So all these people are going to be cast in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword. And they shall have none to bury them, their wives, nor their sons, nor their daughters. Yeah, because the man said that if anybody die, they're going to have to be buried right away. Because there's going to be no refrigerators to keep them cold. Why is there going to be no refrigerators? Because there's going to be no electricity. The Lord said, get thee into darkness. So that's going to do what? You, you're going to have to bury them. Well, most of you people, I'm speaking to the men, you know, not in shape to dig a hole to bury your dead body. Not to mention, it's going to be a famine. Digging a hole is hard work. So are you really going to use your energy to dig a hole big enough to start burying people? Or are you going to conserve your energy for more important matters. Not to mention, you're going to have the sewage, the toilets, the water pipes backing up. You're going to be needing to stand your ground, protect your house and your family. You're going to need to be fighting for any clean water or food that you can get. So, ain't nobody going to be burying no people out here anyway. So, when people start dying in these hospitals, in these homes, and everywhere else, Nobody's going to bury them. They're just going to be right there. That's why the Lord says they shall have none to bury them. 
So dead bodies is going to be all, all around us. Not to mention, again, nothing is going to function. The zoos, how do they, how do they work now? They don't got keys and locks to lock every cage. You know, that was back in the nineties. The zoos, the cages, the animals, they all locked electronically now. So in the blackout, when all the electronics fail, all these zoos gonna be open. And they don't have nobody to feed them in them zoos. So where are these wild animals gonna go? They're gonna come to the cities where all these dead bodies are at, in the hospitals, in the streets, in your house, in your backyard, across the street. You know, people not gonna keep dead bodies in the house, they just gonna throw them outside. So that's gonna attract all these animals that's kept up in the zoos, your hippopotamuses, lions, tigers, bears, chimpanzees, hyenas, wolves, dogs, pumas, cougars, mountain lions. All that stuff going to come to the cities and to the neighborhoods and feed on these dead bodies. So you're going to have people out there killing for food and water, other resources, people fighting. Not to mention, you're going to have every wild animal on the planet out here in the city streets also killing people and eating and trying to survive. Not to mention the grass ain't going to get cut. Ain't nobody going to pick up the trash. And so even the trash, that's going to attract wild animals. Because remember, they're going to break out of the zoos. Nobody there to keep them locked up. Nobody there to feed them. All these dead bodies going to be here. Perfect way to feed all the locked up zoo creatures. Not to mention all the animals that's in the wild anyway. Not to mention the newly created creatures full of rage that the Lord gonna let on the loose. And also again, you know, blackouts are gonna be a few days at a time. Hey, but eventually the blackout gonna last for weeks, possibly months. On top of all that, you gonna have Esau, the so-called white man, come in like a flood. You know, nobody gonna have electricity or power, but somehow he gonna have it. He gonna be equipped with his new night vision equipment, mechanical dogs, robotic soldiers, every weapon that he's been developing for the past 150 years, he gonna use against us. So, yup, hey, that's the lesson. Again, Isaiah 47 to 5, Sit thou silent and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning, and famine. Also going up to Revelation 18 and 7, how much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she safe in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore, the Lord going to bring a darkness over this place, America. It's going to shake everybody apart. So that's the lesson. Till next time, Shalom.